Congress has held a series of meetings with manufacturers to ensure that the availability of oxygen can be ensured. Welcome back. As the oxygen crisis continues to escalate, the centre has stepped in with measures to boost medical oxygen supplies. Over 500 PSA oxygen plants will be funded via the PM Cares Fund at public health care facilities across the country. Each one will be in a particular district. Uh, the Ministry of Home Affairs has also directed all manufacturers in the country to use liquid oxygen only for medical purposes. States too have been asked to curb the use of liquid oxygen for non-medical purposes. Meanwhile, the first oxygen express for Delhi carrying 70 tons of oxygen from Jindal Steel Plant in Raigarh will reach the capital later tonight. C-17 aircraft too have been deployed to airlift empty cryogenic containers to filling stations in Jamnagar. Let's try and understand this entire fight and the demand for oxygen that's now suddenly surged, even though we are one of the largest producers of oxygen across the world, liquid oxygen and industrial oxygen. The Prime Minister has announced the setting up of 551 oxygen plants and the money will go from the PM Cares Fund and it will be across each district. So each of these plants is one in every district. It, uh, uh, the center has also, the Home Minister has cut down on non-medical use of oxygen. In fact, all oxygen being used for industries is being re redirected towards uh, augmenting the requirement as far as the medical needs are concerned. Oxygen Express will be addressed uh, to address the O2 crunch in Delhi. Uh, 70 tons of oxygen coming through. Airlifting of cryogenic O2 tankers across India. The empty tankers are airlifted, dropped back to the filling areas and then they, take, uh, they come back to the uh, points of uh, requirement via road. Deploying Oxygen Express to island uh, territories also, which is being done. And we are, uh, the steel sector is producing 3,474 metric tons of oxygen in a day. That's what they're doing and they're, if they're redirecting these supplies, we've already seen the Tata steel plant uh, produce about 600 metric tons of oxygen. So many steel plants are going to do it. It's also happening in Bukaro. One by one, uh, the, the, the efforts are on to augment the requirement. The, the issue is the end point delivery because we need oxygen containers, we need uh, agencies or plants which will convert the liquid oxygen into gas, uh, pack them into the cylinders and those cylinders will then be deployed. A lot of the hospitals can hold uh, liquid oxygen uh, uh, in, at certain levels and they have their own mechanisms to convert it into gas which would be used by the patients. But there are many other, uh, other regions where that's an issue. Pallavi Ghosh joining us with more details. The issue of cryogenic containers or tankers is one Pallavi but most importantly India has enough and more oxygen to meet the current demand it's a point of delivery yes in fact if we go by the statistics Anand India is one of the largest world's largest producers of oxygen so it's not that there's a dearth of oxygen and the government has stepped in the government has ensured that industrial houses don't use the oxygen for industrial purposes all of them are being diverted for medical facilities uh, then you know the trains have been pressed into service the army the tankers all of them have been pressed into service but they are bottlenecks see what happens is the tankers also have to move from one state to another yeah. and very often that's where they face bottlenecks either they are looking for those clearances, uh, as much of clearances can be ordered by the centre has been, but there are those interstate hiccups which are taking place despite the fact that all duties have been waived up. The MHA had also stepped in to say that there are no restrictions on the movement of these tankers, but delivery and quick delivery is certainly becoming a huge problem. And therefore, states which are seeing a huge spike, particularly like Karnataka, Delhi, Pasta, Uttar Pradesh, they are the ones who are worried a lot. Well, thanks for your inputs, uh, Pallavi.
Moving on, now the all-party meet led by Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Edapadi Parni Swami has passed a resolution to reopen Vedanta Sterlite plant in Thoothukudi for four months for the purpose solely of manufacturing oxygen. Now, as per the resolution, the plant would remain under the supervision of the state-appointed committee, which will also have members of the protesting group. Vedanta Limited has now released a statement saying it is committed to make available 1,000 tons of medical oxygen. The unit was sealed by the state in May 2018 after 13 agitators were killed in police firing during a violent uh, anti-sterilite protest in Tutukuri. Uh, the DMK stand is that we cannot you, uh, I mean, open up the entire plant only to produce oxygen, we can open it up. And only the technician on a temporary basis and it should be reviewed after that. Uh, it cannot become a permanent uh, thing. As long as there is a need for oxygen, we can operate the oxygen plant and under the supervision of the Tamil Nadu government appointed committee. We want only the oxygen plant of the satellite should be allowed to operate and hand out the product to the state government first, Tamil Nadu government first. If it is excess, <coughs> then it can be handed over to other states. Number two, we do not want the plant, satellite plant to, to be operated at any cost. The factory is there. Within four, four weeks, they can be able to produce 1,000 uh, metric ton of uh, oxygen per day. The Tamil Nadu government is constituting a uh, committee headed by the collector and those public representatives also. That committee is empowered to, uh, to uh, generate and to active the, the plant only. Only oxygen plant will be functioning. That's the target, the shot of life, and we have to get to that position where all of us are above the age of 18 are vaccinated so that our mortality or morbidity against the against this virus comes down. As India recorded over 3,52,000 cases in the last 24 hours, the nation is now gearing up for the third phase of mass inoculation program. Beginning the 1st of May, the center has said vaccination for all aged between 18 to 44 will be held through appointments via the COVID app. The center has also written to all states on liberalizing the pricing and preparing for the next step in India's fight against the pandemic. Meanwhile, Delhi government has ordered 1.34 crore vaccine doses and the UP government has placed an order for one crore jabs. On the other hand, Rajasthan Health Minister has raised an alarm saying the Serum Institute has told the Rajasthan government that no vaccines will be available till the 15th of May. Runjun Sharma, Runjun Sharma now joining us with more details as state after state is now placing orders. There are some who will have to wait. Yes, Anand, some will have to wait and also important to underline here that uh, the states might not be able to procure vaccines directly from the manufacturers for a while, but Centre continues to provide all the states free vaccines uh, like before. So 15 crore has the uh, state been doing that and they will continue to do so. So for example, Rajasthan uh, is saying that Serum Institute of India will not be able to provide them uh, vaccine doses until about 15th of May. Uh, so we'll have to wait and watch what the states decide uh, because the center has clearly given guidance to all the states to prepare uh, a map in terms of also um, slotting adults. Um, that is the adult population which is eligible now, Anand. Well, Apart from that, also the center has asked states to rope in more additional centers given the fact that uh, uh, the center is expecting more rush given the fact that... Uh, Right. 
well, I think we just lost Runjan Sharma there, but state after state is also now writing and making different requests to the center. We have Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Arapadi Palni Swami writing to Prime Minister Modi requesting the government or the center to procure and supply the entire required quantity of vaccines for administering all groups, including those in the age group of 18 to 45. So Arapadi Palni Swami does not want that 50% uh, reallocation with the states. He wants the center to do everything. Arvind Kejriwal, meanwhile, while announcing that vaccine will be free for everybody above the age of 18 has also made a request that the prices should be standard across vaccines it should be one standard price be it in private or uh, pub, uh, government hospitals delhi sarkar ne nirnay liya hai ki 18 saal se upar ki umar ke logon ko free vaccine di jayegi hum koshish karenge ki isko jald se jald और बड़े स्तर के ऊपर कैसे लोगों को वैक्सीन किया जाए इसका पूरा प्लान तैयार किया जा रहा है हम लोगों ने दिल्ली में एक करोड़ चौंतीस लाख वैक्सीन खरीदने की मंजूरी दी है हम कोशिश करेंगे कि ये जल्द से जल्द वैक्सीन खरीदी जाए और लोगों को लगाई जाए Let's look at the vaccination numbers and this is the larger agreement ladies and gentlemen that if we have to achieve a level of herd immunity against COVID-19 we need to vaccinate about 65 crore people. 65 crore people across a population of 1.38 billion is the number that we have to 138 crore so we got to vaccinate 65 crore people. S uh, Serum Institute or Covishield produces 70 million doses per month or 1.6 billion doses per year. Bharat Biotech produces only 5 million doses per month. Here is where we have a production problem, even though India has the capacity to manufacture 8.2 billion vaccine doses in a year. The issue is that Covaxin has not been voluntarily licensed to other vaccine manufacturers by the government because the government has also got a stake in it, so that that production can be amped up. Now, 100 million per month by, the second, uh, by, by May end, 2.3 billion per year is the targeted upping of capacity 12.5 million doses per month by July that's what Bharat Biotech is trying to do why is this at 12.5 million doses is the question which is fair to ask if Covishield can amp it up to 100 million doses per month by end of May why can't Covaxin also amp it up to about 50 to 75 million doses per month because that is going to augment the vaccine requirement across the country and help because Covaxin has also now been proved to be efficient. So many people are asking this question as to why is the government not helping Bharat Biotech A, increase its production levels or B, license the uh, manufacturing or uh, production of these vaccines to other manuf vaccine manufacturers who can help bring up the quantity numbers and also bring down the price. Now, after Serum Institute and Bharat Biotech announced prices for their vaccines, a political war of words has broken out between the center and the opposition. The Congress leaders have cried foul over the different prices between center and states. Meanwhile, a call for free vaccine grows louder with more and more appeals to the center. This as Arvind Kejriwal announced free vaccination for all adults in Delhi and hit out at the center and vaccine manufacturers of trying to gain profit amid a pandemic due to different vaccine rates for the state and the center. Calls have also arisen for the government to invoke the competitive licensing clause in the Patent Act of 1970 to control vaccine price and increase vaccine production by expanding the ambit of giving vaccine licenses. Vaccine ke ek nirmata ne kaha hai ki wo rajya sarkaron ko 400 rupai mein denge. Dusre nirmata ne kaha hai ki wo rajya sarkaron ko 600 rupai mein denge. और केंद्र सरकार को दोनों डेढ़ सौ डेढ़ सौ रुपये में देंगे मेरी उम्मीद है कि इसको एक ही प्राइस होना चाहिए ये समय ऐसा है जो प्रॉफिट कमाने का समय नहीं है मैं वैक्सीन मैन्युफैक्चरर्स से अपील करता हूं कि एक तरफ वो खुद भी इस प्राइस को खुद ब खुद डेढ़ सौ रुपये पर ले आएंगे दो सौ दो करोड़ टीकों की आवश्यकता है अगर हमें सबको इम्यूनाइज करना है तो ये 202 करोड़ टीकों में अगर हम ये मान लें कि आधी लागत प्रांतीय सरकार वहन करेगी और आधे लोग खुद टीका लगाएंगे तो इन दोनों कंपनियों का मुनाफा बनता है एक लाख ग्यारह हजार एक सौ करोड़ रुपया समाज में वो लोग भी हैं जो गरीब हैं जो डिसएडवांटेज सेक्शन से हैं क्या कोरोना की इस मुश्किल समय में टीकाकरण से मुनाफा कमाना वो भी इस प्रकार का अनाप शनाप मुनाफा कमाना परमिटेड हो सकता है 
अब इन लोगों ने सबने हल्ला मचाया क्योंकि इनको विदेशी वैक्सीन चाहिए थी किसके एजेंडा पे काम कर रहे हैं वो देश को समझना होगा लेकिन उस देखिए दो बातें साथ नहीं हो सकती इन सब ने अट्ठारह से पैंतालीस का हल्ला बोला और ये वो लोग हैं जिन्होंने पैंतालीस से ऊपर वालों को आज तक वैक्सीनेट नहीं किया है इस समय घटिया राजनीति छोड़कर छत्तीसगढ़ की चिंता करें और पैंतालीस से ऊपर वालों को जो वैक्सीन केंद्र सरकार फ्री में उपलब्ध करा रही है पहले उस जनसंख्या के तो काम खत्म करें वो काम तो किया नहीं है इन्होंने Well, there is a lot of misinformation and also uh, false information that is doing the rounds, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go by what the vaccine manufacturers are saying. They are saying that we've got a certain price beyond which we will not be able to increase our capacity or we can't function, and that's the price. The center has also said the first 100 million doses were at a contracted price. Beyond that, it's a standard price which both the center and the states have to pay. There is no differential pricing. Yes, the differential pricing is the prices for the government, state or center, and private. That's where the difference is going to be. Whether that is fair or not, that is a question which is a legitimate one and the jury is out on that. Moving on. Network 18 wants to ensure every Indian gets the COVID-19 vaccine. Support the Federal Bank and Network 18 initiative Sanjeevni, a shot of life, to increase vaccine awareness. Our health expert is Apollo 24-7. We urge all of you to ask this question. Hashtag lagaya kya, vaccine lagaya kya. Another very, very encouraging uh, development, ladies and gentlemen. After reporting skyrocketing COVID cases in the for weeks at stretch, especially through the last weeks of March and early, early April, the daily cases in Mumbai have come down drastically. In a glimmer of hope amid COVID surge across India, and even though all of Maharashtra continues to record high cases, Mumbai has reported 3,792 fresh cases today. This after the maximum city reported over 5,500 cases yesterday. Mumbai reported the lowest daily cases in April today in addition to a dip in the positivity rate as well. Another story of belief and hope in these times of COVID, a 75-year-old woman who was infected with COVID and whose family was told that she would only live for a little over 24 hours, successfully recovered last week when she returned home after 13 days in hospital. Despite having the most severe CT count of 25 on 25, she managed to defeat COVID, proving everything is possible. Now, Tamil Nadu Chief Minister Adapadi Palni Swami has written to Prime Minister Narendra Modi requesting the GOI or the centre to procure and supply the entire required quantity of the vaccine for administering all groups, including those in the age group of 18 to 45. We'll try and go across to Purnima Murli for more details. Purnima is with us. Purnima, so Adapadi Palni Swami says, don't leave it to the states. We don't want to procure it. You procure it for us, you supply it to us. Absolutely. It has uh, the political parties here say that uh, uh, the states uh, should be given uh, the access to procure directly and not wait uh, to buy from the center. Uh, some other chief minister saying that let the center procure all vaccines and then supply to the respective states. Uh, uh, some other chief minister had requested uh, the prime minister in a letter asking for 20 lakh uh, vaccines in the state. Uh, owing to a uh, more number of people now wanting uh, to get uh, the vaccination uh, uh, vaccine jab. So clearly, uh, Tamil Nadu Chief Minister saying that let this center take the responsibility to procure uh, vaccines and distribute it to state according to uh, the requirements based on each and every state. Well, thanks for your inputs. Well, two points to note before we take a short break, ladies and gentlemen. West Bengal voter turnout till 5 p.m. is 75.06. So clearly we are looking at a near 80% turnout in the seventh phase as well. And Hutch Committee houses will also turn into temporary COVID care centers. That's also a very, very welcome announcement to help augment all those facilities which are already being put up to help uh, uh, cater to the rising number of COVID cases across the country. We take a short break. Stay with us.